Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. It's 637. Listen, uh, coming up a little later on the show, we'll be talking to Michael Steele and Maryland controller Peter Francho is going to join us at the top of the 8 o'clock hour. We're going to ask him all these questions about how Maryland is going to spend a lot of money, at least if the governor has his way. Brett Bear will be with us at 835. But right now we want to go back to a story that we talked to you about yesterday involving the comments of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the DNC chair, who uh, was up in uh, New Hampshire following uh, the, the the primary there, and once again sort of reopened this canard about how she thought the shootings in Tucson were somehow connected to the activities of the Tea Party. Listen again to what Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to say. I, I really agree with you that we need to make sure that we tone things down, uh, particularly uh, in light of the Tucson tragedy from a year ago uh, where my very good friend Gabby Giffords, who is doing really well by the way and I know uh, everybody is uh, making tremendous progress but um, the discourse in America, the discourse in Congress in particular to answer your question very specifically has really changed and I'll tell you I, I hesitate to place blame but I have noticed it take a, a very precipitous turn T with, towards, towards edginess and a lack of civility with the growth of the Tea Party movement. There you go, once again, trying to connect the two, although it, that, that idea had been shot down many times before by those on the left and those on the right. Well, yesterday I got an email from uh, some Tea Party activists around the country that I follow and stay in touch with real regular, and uh, they said basically, quit lying about us. We have on the line Michael uh, Patrick Steele, I'm sorry, Michael Patrick Leahy, who is a uh, who is a, a co-founder of, uh, of one of the Tea Party groups that uh, is very prominent in this country. Michael, how are you? Good morning, Brian. I, I just I gave you the wrong name. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no so, so you're saying to Debbie Wasserman Schultz, basically, shut up and quit lying about us. Were you pretty hot when you heard this? Uh, no, not really. It was just interesting to see that you know this is very unbecoming on her part. It, it's very divisive. It's a strategy. It's an intentional strategy. This was no accident that she said this. They are trying to continue to paint this false narrative about the Tea Party movement. I mean, that, that uh, has and, been pretty well shot down in a lot of different quarters, has it oh, not? Oh, yeah. And, and we, we didn't even, you know, get into the specifics uh, about it. Just stop it now. You know, let's have a real serious discussion. In the Tea Party movement, there's millions of people who just support the three core values of constitutionally limited government, free markets, and fiscal responsibility. We ought to talk about the Constitution. That's why we uh, are challenging her to a debate on the Constitution. We think the country's ready for a direct and civil discourse on the Constitution. She can talk about her view of what the proper federal role of government is. We'll talk about our view, and then we'll let the citizens decide yeah. which view is the most extreme. I hope you're not holding your breath on that. <laughs> <laughs> How have well, you... Michael, how have you felt about the coverage of Occupy Wall Street when compared to the Tea Party movement and how it came up? Mary Catherine, I was listening to your program the first half hour on the Internet here from uh, Nashville, and uh, you had some great, great comments to point out. Um, I agree with you, Mary Catherine. I think that what they ought to do is, since uh, Ms. Wasserman Schultz is such a fan of Occupy Wall Street, um, that they ought to have the Occupy Wall Street folks that are cluttering up uh, the parks in Washington, D.C. right now, do the door knocking. Yeah. Do the get out. Get face to face with the voters and face smell to, to smell. Yeah. Maybe bring and, a couple of rats with you. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, our project, which uh, everyone in your audience can go to this morning at electiondayteaparty.com, is the Tea Party's effort to get out the vote. And uh, let me tell you something. I was listening to uh, James Carville on CNN the other night. And he was, uh, you know, going. He was virtually ecstatic about the fact that the turnout in New Hampshire was, you know, barely an uptick in 2012 versus 2008. But he totally missed the point. When the Tea Party uh, did very well in the 2010 general elections, and we will do very well uh, in the 2012 uh, Republican primaries uh, for, uh, I, let's say, for non-presidential candidates. 
uh, and very well in the general, uh, because we'll have a full slate, and we are going to get out the vote right. uh, among Tea Party activists for dog catcher, congressman, <laughs> right up the line. Uh, senators, and the president. Right, let me ask you, because um, I'm having a hard time getting a sense that there is a Tea Party candidate out there. I hear some people that I talk to in the Tea Party movement who say that they like Santorum. And I heard the other day that you have aligned yourself with Newt Gingrich. Is that correct? Oh, you heard wrong. I have, you have, I have not aligned myself to Newt, Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich is an embarrassment. Well, excuse me, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got that one wrong. Newt, I got that Newt, one wrong. <laughs> Brian, you, you could say a lot of bad things. Well, who are you? Who are you aligned? The more important thing is who are you aligning yourself with? Well, let, let me answer it this way. <laughs> um, you know, Newt Gingrich is, you know, giving uh, uh, Barack Obama his talking points right now. Uh, he's not a, a Tea Party uh, conservative by any means. The problem is that there really is no presidential candidate uh, who is both ideologically aligned with the Tea Party movement fully uh, and who has the stature and the experience to be a presidential candidate. Well, okay, but you got you got to back somebody, so who are you going to back? Well, I'll tell you what, right now I would say we give Barack Obama an F. Um, uh, Ron Paul is a special case. Good on domestic, not so good on foreign. But who are you going to support, Michael? You know, I will probably vote in Tennessee for the least bad of the candidates right now. And who is? Personally, probably Rick Santorum. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, pro probably. Although, you know, I don't think there's much... Uh, a mystery about who is the likely nominee. Right. Well, let me ask you this, Michael. Why aren't there more candidates? Why isn't there any candidate who is more in line ideologically with the Tea Party? Why won't they Brian, run? That is a great question. And, and this is the, the, the answer to that, I think, uh, dispels all these notions that the Tea Party is not going to be active. I mean, we're going to get out the vote at electiondayteaparty.com. Think of how long it takes to develop a candidate. Think of the 63 new freshmen who were elected in 2010. You know, of those 63 uh, new Republicans, um, they all uh, aligned themselves at the start with Tea Party values. But how many of them are really uh, completely committed to the core values of the Tea Party? Uh, all right, but Michael, Maybe I, I got to ask you that, that as, as our time runs down here, I got to really ask you this question. If the nom you said you did, there's no doubt in your mind who, who it looks like the nominee is going to be, and many people are sort of coming to that conclusion. If the nominee is Mitt Romney, will Tea Party activists support that nomination? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't think and there's any doubt about that? Yeah. Well, our strategy is simply this. What we're going to do is we're constantly going to push whoever the nominee is towards our values yeah. in every possible way. And frankly... The Republican Party doesn't have much of a get-out-the-vote effort. Mary Catherine Ham, you've seen this. You know it's, it's pretty abysmal. Well, I mean, I think the, the fact that it, the Tea Party is actively organizing a GOTV sort of says, well, all you need to know about whether they'll jump behind this guy, whoever it is And look, as you know also, you know, why did the Republicans win the Virginia State Senate in November? Very clear. We were involved. That's the right. The Tea Party was involved. The Virginia Tea Party Patriots Federation made that happen in four key districts. Michael Patrick Leahy out of Nashville, Tennessee, one of the, uh, the, the thinking people who, who a lot of people in the Tea Party turn to. I hate to use the word leader because they, they sort of eschew the idea that there are leaders in the Tea Party <laughs> movement, but I think he's one of them. 6.45 in the morning with Jordy. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Mary Kevin.